Hey everybody, Biker Geek here. Recently we took a trip to Prescott to the Arizona Pioneers Home Cemetery to visit the grave of Mary Catherine Haroni Cummings, otherwise known as Rowdy Kate, or better known as Big Nose Kate of Tombstone, Arizona fame. The cemetery is within city limits, actually seems like it's right smack dab in the middle of Prescott, and is surrounded by shopping malls and stores, including a Walmart. Felt kind of strange being in an old cemetery surrounded by so much urban growth. First off, a little history on the Arizona Pioneers Home. This information was pulled from the Arizona Pioneer Home website, and there's a lot more information there if you care to visit them at pioneershome.az.gov. The home began as a brainchild of three prominent Prescott citizens, A.J. Duran, Frank M. Murphy and Johnny Duke to repay the faithful and longtime Arizona residents who helped pioneer and build the state. Duran sponsored a bill to create the home in the territorial legislature in 1907, but it failed. The bill did not gain full support until 1909 and was signed into law by territorial governor Joseph H. Kibbe on March 11th. 1909. Pioneer's home was initially built to house 40 men, but after a W.S. Parsons endowment, a women's wing was added to provide for up to 20 women. In 1929, it was further expanded so as to include a hospital for Arizona's disabled minors. The Arizona Pioneer's home is still in operation today as a retirement home for up to 150 residents. A brief bio of Big Nose Kate. This information was pulled from Wikipedia and I haven't had time to verify the accuracy of all the info. I will say that a lot of the information matches accounts that I've read in other sources, but that doesn't mean everything is accurate. For example, Kate's tombstone shows 1850 as the year of her birth while Wikipedia states 1849. If you have more verifiable information please let me know and I'll place it in the video info. Mary Catherine Kate Haroni was born on November 9, 1849 in Erskikujvar in what was then the Kingdom of Hungary. Pardon me for butchering that name. She was the second daughter of a Hungarian physician and teacher. In 1860, she, along with her father, sister, and stepmother, emigrated to the United States aboard the German ship Bremen. In 1865, Kate's father and stepmother died within a month of each other, and she and her sister were placed in the care of her brother-in-law. She ran away from home when she was 16 and stowed away on a riverboat to St. Louis, Missouri, where one researcher states she entered a convent. I don't have any more information on that. I couldn't find any. In 1869, she is recorded as working as a prostitute for a Madame Blanche Triboli in St. Louis. 1874 records place her working as a sporting woman, another name for prostitute, in a Dodge City, Kansas sporting house, brothel, run by Nellie Bessie Ketchum Earp the wife of James Kate Earp. met Doc Holliday in Fort Griffin, Texas in 1877. The couple followed Earp to Dodge City and registered as Mr. and Mrs. J.H. Holliday at Deacon Cox's boarding house, where by day, Doc operated a dental practice, but spent most of his time gambling and drinking. Violent fights between the two were commonplace, but despite the fights, their volatile relationship continued. According to Kate, they married in Valdosta, Georgia, and traveled to Trinidad, Colorado, and Las Vegas, New Mexico, where they lived for two years. Once again, Doc was a dentist by day and a saloon keeper by night. Kate occasionally worked in a Santa Fe dance hall. In the fall of 1880, Kate and Doc joined the Earps in Tombstone, Arizona. In March of 1881, Holiday was implicated in a stagecoach robbery where two people were killed. Sheriff Johnny Behan and Milt Joyce, a county supervisor, took advantage of Kate's recent fight with Doc to ply her with alcohol and convince her to sign a statement which implicated Doc in the robbery. Holliday was promptly arrested, but released with the charges dropped after the Earps found witnesses who were able to provide Doc with an alibi. On October 26, 1881, the date of the infamous gunfight at the O.K. Corral, 
Kate claims she witnessed the shootout through the window of the boarding house. She wrote that on that day, a man entered Fly's boarding house with a bandaged head and a rifle. He was looking for Holiday, who was still in bed after a night of gambling. Kate recalled that it was Ike Clanton who was turned away by Mrs. Fly. Earlier in the day, Clanton had been pistol whipped by City Marshal Virgil Earp after finding Clanton carrying a rifle and a pistol in violation of city ordinances. Doc Holliday died in 1887. Kate married an Irish blacksmith, George Cummings, in Aspen, Colorado, and moved to Bisbee, Arizona in 1890, where she briefly ran a bakery. Cummings was an alcoholic, and Kate was frequently the victim of his abuse. They separated in 1900 in Wilcox, Arizona, due to his abusive behavior. Cummings later committed suicide in Cortland, Arizona in July of 1915. In 1931, Kate, now 80 years old, applied for admittance to the Arizona Pioneers Home by contacting her longtime friend, Arizona Governor George Hunt. After six months, she was admitted, becoming one of the first female residents of the home. She became an outspoken resident and often assisted other residents with their living comforts. Kate died on November 2, 1940, a week before her 91st birthday, of myocardial insufficiency. Her death certificate also shows that she suffered from coronary artery disease and advanced arteriosclerosis. The death certificate also shows significant discrepancies in regards to her birthplace and parents. Although she was born in Hungary, her death certificate states she was born in Davenport, Iowa to Marshall Michael and Catherine Baldwin. Both Michael's and Baldwin's birthplaces were recorded as unknown. Mary Catherine Heroni Cummings was buried on November 6, 1940 in the Arizona Pioneers Home Cemetery. This little seat here. No date or anything on this. Oh, Veteran's Son, 1884 to 1912. It's only 28, native of California. This will be 3rd California Infantry. U.S. Navy. 1976? Wow. He's only 25. Wow. That's sad. Not even 25, almost 25. Tucson, 1929, died 2001, 71, 72 years old, roughly. Artist, poet, novelist, teacher. I'll have to look her up. Let me take some pictures with my phone while I'm at it. Well, I'm going to try this. I don't know how well it's going to work. February 
Wow. 2000, February, shoot, 11 days. How sad. Wow, these are some old ones. Faye Loving Good. Baby Love. Oh my God, a mother and baby. No dates. Wow, I can't even make that out. Did you get a picture of this one? Yeah. Hopefully we can make it out in the photo. Anything interesting over here? These are older. Not... 1934 to 19, or 1834, wow. To 1917. 1842 to 1911. Wow, these are some. Considering that uh, Prescott wasn't incorporated till 1865 or 1864, so this is all pre Prescott. 1876. Wow, only 11 years old. David Ritter. 1882, 29. Yeah. Eighty years old. Thirty-nine. Fifty-four. Wow. I guess we'll start going down this way. I'm gonna go look at this grave here. And then I'll go on these. Lily Bar. Monroe, daughter of Robert Barr, a novelist, born in Glasgow, Scotland, <laughs> died in Prescott, Arizona. A grave and valence, so you should stand on them. You getting it? Yeah, I hope I get it. Yeah, it's hard to see. Guess we'll find out. Mm -hmm. Could take it this way if you could flip it. Yeah, go ahead. I don't know if I got it either. But these don't have any years. So yeah, but they're still military. We should, could. I did. I took like a group. Yeah, I did you? So you get the whole thing in one picture? No, I didn't get them all in one. No. 1830 to 1982. Roderick Ross, George S. Thurston. Is that 1834 or 18? Yeah. Wow. 1834 Michael Martin Gilbert. George W. McFarlane. Whoa, wow, this ground is soft. John Nugent. William H. Forbes, Surger, Surgeon, 31st Georgia Infantry, Confederate States Army, 1842 to 1935. Chaz W. Pierce. Stella Pierce. Oh, there's a name. Harry S. McCool. And what's your name? Harry McCool. Got a handle of a golf club. And I guess that's Rotary or Sheriff. 
Private George M.D. Harper, 2nd Company H, 15th Texas Infantry, Confederate States of America, 1844 to 1932. And that is James Olmstead. Yeah. A sign. a sign. What's it say? It says that away. What? To big nose Kate's? <laughs> Mary Kate Cummins. Yeah. Big nose kid. So there's the arrow. You know what I'm betting? Well, oh, that's probably it. You want to go down that way? Yep. That's it. Oh shit, I saw this one first. <laughs> well, I didn't want to come just to see this. No, I but... understand, but I'm well, looking all up there reading every one of them. <laughs> Welcome to Kate's home. Please leave her a nice... What does that say? A note. A note. No... Huh. No ta uh, taking any of her stuff. Kate is watching. Well, yeah. <laughs> Boy, she was short. Yeah, that is a She's short. only about four feet tall. <laughs> yeah, but that. <laughs> Take a picture of just the plate. I'll try. Can't see it. No, I could do it. No, I mean it's back the reflection. And this is the view up the hill we just came down. And over I, there is the view she gets. Hey, big nose. Yeah, hey, big nose a, can go to Burger King and Walmart. Dollar Tree if you need something small. Subway if you're watching your figure. <laughs> you liked your bar. <laughs> Denny's. Careful. Don't go there all the time. Sell big ass beers here now. All right, let's wow. see. Sorry about the view. Probably was nice at one time. I'm sure it was. Now you got a white roof. All right. All right, I gotta get some water. Yep, let's head back up. Then we can go down the other side. <laughs> well, it's really warm here today. Warm love my hairdo. I had to take my hat off to film, so. It's, uh, look at that sky behind me. Isn't that awesome? Now we gotta go up this hill. And my wife, not being the spry young thing that I am. Yeah. <laughs> now there is a big old crow in there. And hear them talking to each other. I'm not sure you really want to use this outhouse. <sighs> Unless there's something propping it up in the back.
Thank you.